These are the books that are on my next to read list. I started reading a bunch of these ones and then just stopped halfway through. Hey guys, it's good old Gab and welcome back to my channel. Sorry, I know it's been a while, but I've been really, really busy and there's a really good reason for it this time. So I'm finally in the fourth and final year of my PhD. Ah, I know, it's so exciting and I'm here, you know, reflecting on the past couple of years and it's been an absolutely wild ride. You know, this PhD has had a lot of ups and downs. There's been loads of late nights just revising and reading and just rewriting things over and over again. A lot of my project focuses on bioinformatics and microbiology. So my project is looking specifically at a bacteria called E. coli which you might have heard of. E. coli is commonly known as a fecal contaminant indicator, which means that if it's present in a certain location, for example, wastewater or in food, it can indicate that there is some fecal contamination that's happened upstream. E. coli is really, really important because certain strains can cause disease. There are certain types of E. coli that can cause really bad tummy aches and infections. We call these pathogenic lineages of E. coli and there are a whole range. But majority of the time, E. coli is a commensal, which means that it actually doesn't cause any harm. It's actually an opportunistic pathogen. So regardless of whether it is one of these pathogenic lineages or one of these commensal ones, they still can cause an infection and cause harm and disease to people and animals if it gets into the right place at the right time. My project looks at E. coli contaminating a whole range of different environments and also colonizing a bunch of different hosts. So for example, part of my project looks at animals and humans. So as I'm writing this part of my thesis, I've actually been reading a lot into zoonotic diseases. So recently I've been reading this book. I'll show you guys. Spillover by David Quammen, which is an absolutely fantastic book, by the way. It is roughly 500 and... 30 pages, Ebola, SARS, HIV, and now COVID-19. As globalization spreads and we destroy ancient ecosystems, we encounter strange and dangerous infections that originate in animals and can be transmitted to humans. From bats and horses to monkeys, gorillas, and chickens, animals are passing some of their most dangerous viruses, once contained, into humans. And the results can be catastrophic. In a journey that takes him from southern China to Congo, from Bangladesh to Australia, David Quammen tracks these infections to their source and asks what we can do to prevent future pandemics from spreading across the face of the earth. And can I just say, this is such an amazing book. It focuses on a bunch of different viruses and bacteria and how they've spread from animals to humans. Of course, this looks at infectious, dangerous diseases, so things that will actually cause harm to humans. But as we know, not every single virus and not every single bacteria will cause immediate harm. Honestly, it is just another fantastic book that I loved reading. At the front, Walter Isaacson summarizes it best. A frightening and fascinating masterpiece that reads like a detective story. And it actually is exactly like a detective story, except we know the culprit right from the start. I think David Quammen did a really great job with making this book accessible. You don't really need some really in-depth biological background to understand everything that's happening in this book. And I think that's what makes this piece of literature just absolutely amazing. Anyways, while reading this book and talking to a bunch of people about it, I've actually realized that a lot of people don't understand what zoonotic diseases are. So what I wanted to do in this video was to just cover that because I think knowledge is important and there shouldn't be any barriers in between us and understanding what goes on around us in this world. So first of all, what is a zoonotic disease? A zoonotic disease is an infectious disease that passes from animals to humans. There are things like Hendra, Ebola, HIV. So viruses aren't the only example of zoonotic infections. Bacteria can also transfer from animals into humans. An example of this is Q fever, which is caused by Coxiellae burnetti. And this is primarily found in bovine, ovine, and caprine animals. So for example, cows, sheep, 
and goats. And even though a lot of our major infections have been traced back to zoonotic origins, that's not the only thing that we should be concerned about. So there have been bacteria and viruses and fungi that have been found in the environment that can cause infections to humans. An example of this is Legionella, which was discovered in Philadelphia in 1976, aptly named after its discovery in the Convention of the American Legion. This bacteria had colonized the cooling towers and infected this whole convention of people. And of course, this disease transmission doesn't happen just unidirectionally, it can happen both ways. So there have been examples of zoo anthropognotic transmission as well. This is transmission from humans back to animals. Recently, I've read this really interesting paper which was a great example of this. During the monkeypox outbreak, two human males were infected with monkeypox. And they also had a companion dog that slept in the same bed as them. After inspection, the dog did get sick and did catch monkeypox from the owners. And this close contact between humans and their pet companion animals is just a really interesting example of the ways that we can transmit and share disease. Now throughout my PhD, every single time I bring up this part of my thesis, everyone seems to love to discuss it. I think it's because companion animals are just a major part of our daily lives. For now, my research hasn't been done yet, but I'm definitely going to be working hard to complete it soon. In the meantime, I do recommend picking up this book. It is just really, really interesting. These are the books that are on my next to read list. I started reading a bunch of these ones and then just stopped halfway through because I got busy. This one has taken me longer than usual. Usually I consume books like this. It takes me maybe um, a week to finish a book. This one took me a month and a half maybe even two and it took me a while I think it's because I really wanted to understand and digest every single part of this book and I know that I'm not gonna be done reading this I'm going to keep rereading this because there are a lot of really interesting things that I just need to wrap my head around you know so yeah on Instagram I gave this book a 10 out of 10 and that's just because I absolutely love the topic I love the writing it just gripped me and I did find it really enthralling I know this isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea, but you know what? Try and give it a go. Maybe you'll find something really interesting here as well. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this little book review and a kind of overview of my PhD. But yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day, and thank you for watching. Alright guys, peace out.